Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. We're so glad you chose to worship with us today. Before we begin, now is a good time for you to gather your bread and cup for communion. Service will begin momentarily. It's hard for people who are afraid to stand firm in what they believe in and to talk openly about their convictions. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I think the battery died in the clicker. For those who have suffered Back much. Up one time. There we go. For those who have suffered much. It is difficult to accept the things that can change for the better. We're hoping things change for the better. It is even difficult for them to accept that misery and the wounds it leaves can help ease the burden of others. Healing becomes possible and believable when we believe that Christ's wounds and scars reflect our own wounds and scars. The scars of his wounds do not speak of defeat, rather of his rising above the pain, and he is inviting us to believe. His rising is our resurrection strength, and our scars are not to be feared, for their stories help others to rise above the pain. Amen. Amen. Would you remain as you are and join us in our opening song?
Would you pray with me this morning? Precious God, thank you for this time we have to be together. Thank you for a wonderful Easter tide, this Easter season, a time of resurrection, a time for us to rejoice because we know we have a risen Savior in our lives. We pray that you will bless now all that is said and done in this place. We pray that you will let your anointing flow through here just like we always expect. And as we always ask, let us all leave for the better. Whether we're online or here in the building, help us to all leave this time of worship together better than the way we came. Changed for the better. We ask in the name of Jesus our Christ and all that is holy. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Well, good morning again and welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. If this is your first time with us here in the uh, sanctuary or online, would you just wave at me so I can wave back at you? Yay! We're so glad to see you. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. We want to tell you that um, we are just delighted when new folks come in and we hope that you're local and you stay or if you live somewhere way off somewhere that the Spirit speaks to you and tells you that this is the greatest place on earth to live and so that you can come back and be a part of Los Angeles, California and Founders MCC. Amen? You want to get some amens in there? That's all right. Amen. We love it here. We want to say welcome. And, and we also want to say uh, welcome, especially those of you online. Thank you for joining us. Some of you are online every single week and joining us from various places around the world, not just here in other states, even though we have church members in other states and other countries. We want to say thank you for being so faithful. Shout out to all of you. We love you and we're so glad that you are here. We have a few announcements for you this morning. As the ushers bring the sign-in sheets, those of you that are new will know that you can sign in to get our e-news each week. Um, while I'm starting, I have a couple announcements and, and I'm going to ask Pastor Lucia to step up while I'm, I'm going over the first couple of announcements because she's going to give a couple as well. Um, don't forget that this coming Tuesday night at 6, is actually 6.30 p.m., is our monthly board meeting. Um, and you, it is online, it's on Zoom. Our board meetings are open and anyone can attend. Uh, the link is in your bulletins um, or on the first page of your, um, um, our website. Thank you, I'll get it out in a minute. Secondly, don't forget that later this month, the last Sunday of this month is our annual congregational um, meeting. Our spring meeting, it is the last Sunday of this month. It is between the uh, 10 o'clock service and the 1.30 service. It'll be from 11.30 to 12.30. It will be both on site, so you can come and be in the building, or you can uh, join online. At that congregational meeting, we will be electing four um, uh, new board members and two late delegates. Uh, so that's the main business. We'll also be showing you the budget that we have worked up at this point and um, let you see the state of our finances at church and just give you an update and then some reports from Reverend Alejandro and myself. Um, all of that information will be on our website uh, during this week and you can start perusing later this week uh, the information on the board members who have applied or people who have applied to be board members as well as lay delegates and uh, Reverend Alejandro and my, my reports. But all of that will be on there along with a, a possible budget. We're waiting till after Tuesday night so the board can get final approval on everything that we're going to put up um, for you this week. So wait until after Tuesday night, probably after Wednesday, give, give our web um, master a, a few minutes to get it done on Wednesday. And then the information will be up on our website. We will also, just so you know, it's not in these announcements. But also on the day before that, on a April 29th, we'll have a forum online only, a Zoom forum, to talk about any of the issues that you may have, in, if, um, and along with having the um, four prospective board members on there in case you want to ask them any questions. And Lay Delitz, that you can ask them uh, questions as well as the board so that we can um, answer a lot of the questions that you may have or any questions that may come up so that it doesn't take so long during the actual meeting. How about that on Sunday? All right. I'm also putting together a pride planning team. 
If you're interested in serving on that, you know that we are, we register to um, march in the parades, uh, in the LA parade and the WeHo parade on the first two Sundays of June. And if you remember last year, we were also in the um, Boyle Heights um, parade, but that was on a Saturday. And um, we had a float in all three of those. And so if you're interested, um, would you uh, send Reverend Alejandro, I don't want to overstep because Reverend Alejandro heads up that team every year and he's got us signed up already so that we can participate. And uh, so if you're interested in helping us plan how Founders represents this year, don't worry, I've already got some ideas and I hope that you will come and expand them. How about that? Um, and let us know. Just write him a little note this week in the email to Rev Alejandro at mccla.org and let him know I'm interested in being on the Pride Planning team. And we'll set up probably an online uh, Zoom meeting, even maybe later this week, to get us started. All right, Pastor Lucia, come up. I believe the next one's on you. Okay. Good morning, church. Good morning. This is Faith Climate Action Week. And it is sponsored by Interfaith Power and Light, which is a national organization. We're part of the California uh, section of that group. And uh, this year we have several really, really good and important activities for you to join in with. You see on the slide there we're having a film screening. Interfaith Power and Light has made special arrangements with um, the American Resilience Project to allow us to screen, it's three short films. One will be Wednesday evening uh, at seven o'clock, the other will Thursday evening at seven, and then Sunday we'll do the whole thing from three to five p.m. You must pre-register in order to see the films. That's part of our agreement. And it's a very easy pre-register. It's a bit.ly link, bit.ly, slash FMCC climate, FMCC climate one, FMCC climate two, and FMCC climate one two, okay, one dash two. That information, um, Palooza and Desiree are going to be staffing a table uh, during in the courtyard and they will have that information there. The other thing going on is on Earth Day, which is Saturday, April 22nd at 12 noon, Yes. Back up. Back up. There's a oh, clip. there's a clip. Oh, yes, there's a clip. There's a, I forgot there was a clip. <laughs> there's a clip. A preview. A trailer. <clears throat> something we in Hollywood know a little something about. I hope it trails. It trailed on my computer. Giddy up. Maybe, maybe back up a slide and then pull back in and say, oh, wait, there it was. It was whoop, about to go. Whoop. There we go. For those people in the fossil fuel industry, it is a simple truth that your business is going to go away. It's just a matter of figuring out how to do that without leaving people behind or destabilizing the system. There's nine points of failure in the United States. You take any one of those out, then you could have partial grid collapse. And many of our bases are at the end of the power line. We don't want to lose these military bases. One of the questions they're going to be asking is, does the base have its own power? There's virtually no one that is opposed to solar. Now that differs from our elected officials going against their constituents. In six states across the country, power companies are fighting to change the rules. We understand that their bottom line is investment. They've got to turn a profit. There's an energy revolution going on. Shouldn't I have the freedom to put solar panels up in my roof if I want? Should there really be a utility telling me, no, you can't do that? If they keep trying to push that, more and more people are just going to disconnect from the grid. I want the power company at the table when it comes to developing solar and EVs because they have the money, they have the infrastructure, Put it on the moral foundation. Everyone has a right to clean water, to toxic free air. I believe that God created this world and put that sun out there, in my opinion. 
for us to take advantage of. This is the civil rights issue of our time. Take care and protect my creation. We will stand as one united force. We will not bend, we will not break, and we will not bow down. Interesting. All right. All right. Yes, current revolution, as you can see, it focuses on tr the transition from fossil fuels to renewables with a focus on national security, economic prosperity, and environmental justice. Bring it all together. And there's enough time uh, after, we film, after we show each film, there'll be time for discussion and conversation and prayer. All right. And speaking of prayer, on Saturday, Earth Day, at 12 noon, all across the country, your local time, for those of you out there in internet land, 12 noon your time as well, there'll be a climate blessing prayer, okay? And we have copies of that prayer in English and in Spanish out at the table where uh, Desi and Palooza will be able to give you those so that you can remember Saturday at 12 noon to pray this prayer. And online you'll be able to find it on our uh, Facebook justice page, facebook.com slash fmccjustice, okay? All of this information will be there, and I suppose I'll sneak it onto the home Facebook page, too. Sounds like a plan. All right. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> you know, the MCC has been on the move. Founders has been on the move in the last week or two. Um, yes, we did something very strange last week. It's, well, strange to me. Um, and I was so excited to have such uh, positive feedback. And I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who participated uh, in, us, <laughs> in us having, um, there's Lewis. Um, in, in all that happened last week, I'm telling you, I was just so blessed, so excited. Um, and thank you to all of you who participated here at church. And then thank you for all who went out to West Hollywood. As you can see, we were even joined by other church members that didn't get here but watched the service online and joined us at the uh, park for, all, um, for the march last week. And I will tell you several things came of that. If you noticed in your bulletins, there are three links. There were three different <laughs> media outlets that came and, and interviewed us. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in my message, but also um, what people didn't know was that Equality California, who we're very familiar with and have worked with on various things, came to Pastor Penny after the march and wanted to interview her for an upcoming um, clip that they're going to be doing, a movie that they're doing, um, and a documentary. I couldn't get the word out. Documentary that they're doing. And you say, well, how is that important? Because it means we're church outside of these walls. Yes. Yes. It means that people are listening. Had I gone as Pastor Keith, I'm not so sure that would have happened. I'm really not so sure that would have happened. But they understood Pastor Penny very well. So not that I enjoy Pastor Penny so much and walking in that long in those shoes. I don't know how some of you do that. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> all the time, but um, God bless you, and um, if you can continue that, it was a little difficult, but you know what? I, I really felt led for us to participate and to do what we did, and God brought the increase, and I believe that that's what happens. We, it, pay, it made people know that MCC, and here in LA, Founders MCC, is still relevant after 53 years, 54 years, amen. So thank you for all of you who supported. And, and those of you who did not come and drive, that's okay. We'll do it again sometime. You don't even have to wait for a special occasion around here. You can just do it. You can just do it anytime. Amen. It's time for us to pass the peace to one another. If you're online, type in your peace to each other and to us, those of you in the house. Please pass the peace to one another. Please well, make our new folks feel welcome. Amen.
Please stand as those that are able or stand in spirit. This morning's reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. It was still the first day of the week that evening while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Jesus came and stood among them. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As God sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called Didamus, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger into the wounds left by the nails, and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus, Jesus replied, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see me and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence. Signs that aren't recorded in the scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing you will have life in his name. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. So last week, Pastor uh, shared with us about Mary Magdalene and how she was one of the ones, one of the women. Important, it was that she was one of the women that was given instructions to go tell. And this is her song. finished he said we had watched as his life ebbed away then we all stood around till the guards took him down Joseph begged for his body that day it was late afternoon when we got to the tomb 
wrapped his body and sealed up the grave. So I know how you feel. His death was so real. But please listen and hear what I say. I've just seen Jesus. I tell you, he's alive. I've just seen Jesus, our precious Lord alive. And I knew he really saw me too. As if till now I've never lived all that I've done before won't matter anymore I've just seen Jesus And I'll never be the same again. It was his voice I first heard those kind, gentle words asking what was my reason for tears and I cried in despair my Lord is not there he said child it is I I am here I've just seen Jesus I tell you, he's alive. I've just seen Jesus, our precious Lord alive. And I knew, yes, I knew he really saw me. It was as if till now I've never lived All that I've done before Won't matter anymore I've just seen Jesus I've just seen Jesus I've just seen Jesus and all I've ever done before won't matter anymore I've just seen Jesus and I'll never be the same again I've just seen Jesus Hallelujah I've just seen Jesus Yes, he's risen He lives, he lives, he lives He lives
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. I've just seen Jesus. One more time. One more time. Hallelujah. Spirit is in the house, people. Oh, that same spirit, that Easter resurrection spirit still in the house. Last week we had church. Yes. We're having church yes. this Sunday too. Yes. The music last week was off the chain and my goodness. Yes. Ooh, this week too. Yes. Spirit was in the house. Spirit still in the house. Ooh. I could leave right now and say I've been to church. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, see if I can preach. Hallelujah. In today's reading, it's still Easter Sunday. Today's reading is still, in fact, next Sunday, supposed to still be Easter Sunday. Three weeks for us, one day for them. It was the same day. The disciples are in hiding. The same disciples that had followed Jesus and boldly proclaimed this new message, who had been out fighting for justice for all of the oppressed, who had a new message of salvation for all of God's people, these same disciples were now in hiding. Why? Because Jesus had been captured and they saw what happened to him and they knew it could happen to them. And they are in hiding not knowing what to do. They're probably grieving. They're probably questioning everything. What have we done for the last three years? We've been serving God. We've been following Jesus. We've had this wonderful message. And yes, we've had some conflicts. We've been run out of a town or two. They've been after Jesus a few times, but they haven't come after us before. But now this changes everything. And they're probably wondering, what do we do now? What are we going to do now? And they're probably planning. I better put some glasses on. I may not be able to see any of that. <laughs> but they're planning. They're wondering, what are, what's the plan? Where do we go from here? Don't we do that after a funeral? Yes. What are we going to... How many times have somebody's close to me passed and I'm like, what am I? What am I going to do without her? What am I going to do? What am I going to do without this person in my life? What are we as a church going to do without this church member, without this congregant? We depend so much on this person. How does this affect my life? How does this affect our lives? How many times do we do that? And we know that sometimes you have to put a plan in place about what's going to happen next. I've told you about my mom passing away and, and the pastor broke down during a sermon and cried and he said, I don't know how I'm going to go on because I depend on her for so much. And he, he was like, I, I've now, he had to make a plan for how to fill all of the spots that she filled yes, exactly. for the church to continue. We all do that. Whether we do it consciously or not, we have to be planning or we just go out there like, I don't know how the future is going to look, but it's not going to look the same without that person. Same when you get out of a relationship. Uh-oh. You have to learn a new navigation system and it feels uneasy. It's okay, though, because Jesus showed up. And whatever we're going through, Jesus always shows up. Jesus just popped right in to the, to the room where they were hiding they could try to hide. They couldn't hide from him. <laughs> Jesus popped right into the room where they were and he says, peace, peace, be, I bring peace to you. I'm here to give you peace. Jesus always shows up to give us peace. He shows them his scars and I'm sure after the initial shock, because if someone passed away and that we know and then they just pop back up in the room later, we might be uh, a little shocked. We might need a little Jesus peace right about then too. <laughs> and they were <laughs> shocked, but they're thinking, well, he's alive. And he, he shows them the scars and he says, I'm alive. I'm really alive. I'm here. 
and I'm here to give you peace. But I'm thinking they're wondering about their future and now Jesus popped back in. So now we have more questions. So Jesus, are we going to pick up where we left off? Are we going to move all of us to some safer city to start this message again? Jesus, are you back to stay? Are you back to be with us through all of it? Jesus, where are we going from here? And Jesus makes it pretty clear when he breathes on them. I love that. He breathes on them. That breath. That's the spirit. He just pours the spirit on all of them. He didn't wait till the day of Pentecost. He just poured the spirit on them right there. Right then and there, he says, no, 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 no. I'm not going to be here, but you're going to keep going. you got to keep going. you got to keep doing that. He gave them that word when they were ready to collapse and say, oh, no, we just can't do anything anymore. My life is over. We can't do anything. Our ministry is over. We can't do anything. The church is going to close down. It's all done. It's all over. Everything we worked for for these years is now done. Jesus says, oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Look at these scars. I, I, here, here's the scars. This is the real me. I want you to understand. So you can go out. You can keep going. Keep telling the message. Keep believing what you stood for. Keep believing in justice. Keep believing that you have to fight for the oppressed. Keep doing the work that I taught you to do. Mm. All of that. All of that. And they were worried about themselves. And Jesus says, no, you got to stay. you got to keep going. you got to keep moving in the spirit. He's passing the torch to them. The students have now finished with their lessons. The master teacher has passed all of his knowledge on to them. And now they become master teachers. Did you hear that? Now they become the master teachers. They, the disciples, filtered down to 2023, 4607 Prospect Avenue, Los Angeles. They become the master teachers because the spirit is still there. The power and wisdom, the gifts, all of it. The same spirit that breathed that day breathed, is breathing in here today on us. That same spirit is here to keep us moving forward, to continue the ministry, to continue the movement they started. And then he made them peace again. And then they went and found Thomas, who for some reason was not with them. There's always one that's lagging somewhere out there. And then they pop back in and want to know, well, I, I catch me up on everything. What did I miss, right? What did I miss? And then we find Thomas gets his nickname, Doubting Thomas, because he says, well, I'm not going to believe that you saw Jesus. They said, we've seen Jesus. We've seen him. He's alive. He's really alive. I ain't going to believe that. I'm not going to believe that unless I see him for myself. And I can imagine Thomas feeling a little left out. Why would Jesus appear to them and not? Was I not important enough? And I'm just not going to believe unless Jesus himself shows up and shows me what he showed you. And says to me what he said to you. And includes me where I was excluded before even though it was my own fault for being excluded because I wasn't there. Hmm. I won't believe unless I see him for myself. He wanted to know the genuine Jesus was really there. He wanted to experience Jesus for himself. He wanted to receive that same spirit. Remember that Jesus breathed on them and they had the spirit. He was like, mm, I want that same spirit too. I may have missed it the first time, but I'm here now. I want that same spirit. And wouldn't you know it, oh, a little over a week later, Jesus showed up where they were again and Thomas was with them this time. I have a feeling he didn't miss any more meetings after that. <laughs> Jesus showed up, breathed the Holy Spirit on you, and I got left out. Oh, I'm not missing any more meetings. Here's what got me in this reading this week. Thomas did not ask to see Jesus' face. 
how do we usually identify people? We look, generally, we look at their faces, right? Thomas did not want to see Jesus' face. He would not believe until he had seen Jesus' scars. He said, show me the scars. All right, all right. Show me the scars. I need to know if it's really you, and I won't know it unless I see the scars. Think about this for a second. Jesus could have come back completely healed. Jesus was the great healer after all. He had healed other people. He had raised other people from the dead. He could have come back with no scars. Right. Proclaiming, I'm Jesus. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm, you know, I got healed in those three days while I was gone away from you. I got healed. I'm not. No, Jesus had the scars. He had the scars to prove where he had been. He had the scars to show for the life he had lived and the death he had experienced. So they looked at him. Thomas said, I don't want to see your face. I know what that looks like. I've been looking at that for three years. I want to see the scars. I need to know it's really you. Are they in the right places? I need to know. I need to experience the real Jesus. I'm looking for the real Jesus and I'm not going to believe it unless... I see the scars. There's a movie called Love, Valor, Compassion. Remember that? And in, in that movie, there's a, a Jason Alexander plays a guy named Buzz who's been diagnosed with HIV. And there's another person, I believe the character's name was James. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a while. But I, I believe it was a guy named James. And in the movie, not on the stage, in the movie... They were sitting under a tree near, this is near the end of the movie and, and the, the, there's a, another gentleman that I believe was James who was dying with AIDS. And he had, he had marks all over his body. Scars from the cancer sores that were all over his body. And I, one of the most moving scenes in that whole movie for me watching it back in the day when AIDS was still like ravaging our community. <clears throat> he didn't feel loved or accepted and he was ashamed to go out because people could see and readily identify that he had these marks all over him and people knew immediately what was going on and people didn't want to be around him because he had these scars all over him. And I remember the character of Jason Alexander, Buzz, them sitting under a tree and Buzz reached over and unbuttoned his shirt and began to kiss each one of the scars. He kissed each one of the scars that he could see to let him know, no, this makes you real. This is the real you and that's part of you. It's not something to go hide, it's just who you are. And it makes you real. It makes you real. And I believe Here's what I believe. You know, they say uh, uh, the, that the world is looking for something. I've heard that all my life. The world is looking for something. And the church is what has to operate. The church is what has to show and to, to be ready to give. We have to be the disciples, right? We have to be ready to show up and give what the world is looking for. And what is the world looking for? Are they looking for a, a, a hijacked Jesus? Are they looking for a, a literal interpretation of holy books, not just ours, but others? Or are they looking at someone? Are they looking for someone who has the scars of battle? The scars of having lived through, having come through, having come through the death, having come through the torture, having come through the oppression, having come through all of that so that we can stand up with our scars all over us, with our scars visibly. They're looking for the scars of God's people to say, I know that's real. I know that's real because I can see the scars in your life. Wait a minute. You got excommunicated by a Christian church and you're still serving God today? Absolutely right. 
Why? Because God didn't excommunicate me. It was just another scar that I had to go on in my spiritual journey. You say you've taken some abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse. You've been falsely accused. You've been lied on, cheated on, and all sorts of other things. Yes, Jesus was too. And guess what? He survived it, and I can too. I'll just wear the scarf. And I'll wear them. You say, were you wearing them proudly? No, I'm not wearing them proudly. I wish they weren't there, but unfortunately they are. But I'm saying that what, what, what the world is, is Thomas. The world is saying, I'm not going to believe. Unless I see that you are real and you are genuine. Last week in that march, I can't tell you, Lewis was with me part of the time. There were different ones of you that were with me during the march. I kept getting separated from the groups. Because one by one, people kept coming up and saying, and what is this church now? And I've been looking for a place to grow my spiritual life, but I don't know. I'm not trusting I'm not trusting. I, I've been through a whole lot and, and I, I got kicked out of where I was and, I, and it made me not ever want to go back through the church doors again. Yeah. And yet you said you had just come from your own church dressed like that. And this gives me hope that maybe there is a place They wanted to see something real. They wanted to see something genuine. And how in the world are you going to do that when you're wearing a costume? Because I'm wearing the scars. Because it's real. Because I have seen Jesus' scars. I've had the real experience. Because Jesus didn't give up on me. And I'm not going to give up on him. They want to see unconditional love. They want to see the scars. They want us to show them how to live with the scars, not go into hiding. There was one young man, one Latino young man last week that he just kept, he went, he would go away and he'd come back and he'd talk some more. And it was obvious that the church had hurt him. And it was like, how are you holding on to faith? How are you holding on to faith when the church has been bad? And I kept saying, because the Spirit of God is alive and well. The Spirit of God is alive and well. The Spirit of God. And it, and it wasn't even so much the words. I think he just wanted to be around people that were real. People that were genuine. That meant what they were saying. And they were open to hear. But in the Christian church, you can't do that. Oh, yes, you can well, I, they've never let me do this in the Catholic Church. And well, then go to a different church. Harrison Address, 4607 Prospect Avenue. But I can really go and be myself. And I'm like, don't be anybody else. Be exactly who God created you. Oh, you're going to tolerate me there? No, I'm going to celebrate you here. I'm going to celebrate God's children right here. Why? Because it's still Easter time. It's still a resurrection. Because I've just seen Jesus. And he just saw me too. And all the other stuff I've done before won't matter anymore. Won't matter anymore. It won't matter anymore. Yes, I'll carry the scars with it, but I will wear those scars and say it was worth it. It was worth it. They're looking for hope, and we can bring that. They're looking for the good news, and we have it. We have it. We, the disciples. And we're not going to sit in a room hiding and worried about what can happen out there. Pastor Lucia Our justice carries us to the street sometimes. We have it. And we have the ability to share it. Show them, saints. Show the world what you really have. Show them the spirit of God that's in you because God has breathed once again on us. Show them the scars. Show them the the real Jesus. 
Show them unconditional love. Show them how it's really supposed to be. And when they can't believe the stuff that they hear and the stuff that they read, tell them simply, believe the scars. Amen. Good morning, church. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Raina Sills. I'm doing the call to offering today. Thank you for your beautiful message, Pastor. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful message. Beautiful. As I was thinking about the message that I wanted to convey today for the offering, I was reminded of a teaching I watched online by one of my spiritual teachers, Carolyn Mace, and that's M-Y-S-S if you want to look her up. And she was talking about this extreme individualism, this separation in the world and this division, and that we're, there's a hunger for attention and a hunger for recognition. Now, not that those things aren't healthy at times, but there are the extremism that is behind those. And instead of thinking of what is my purpose, how about what is the purpose of life? And how does what I do fit into that greater whole? And I wanna take that principle and put it into the giving. I've heard many years, I've said it, what does my gift do? What does my lack do? How can I participate when all I have is very little? But instead of thinking of that, what is the purpose of giving? And how does my contribution, how does my value fit into that? Another spiritual teacher of mine, bless her heart, we're coming up on the two-year anniversary of her passing in in, in peace, uh, Natasha Santian used to always tell me, tu eres parte, which means you are a part of. You are part of. When you give, you're a part of something great. When you give of yourself, when you give of your tithes and offerings and you're giving, you are a part of something great. And there, it's an open-ended question. You know, it doesn't matter the amount. 
Some give, some give more, some give a different amount. The amount is immaterial. What matters is the person that's giving it and the importance that they have and the love that they have and the value and importance that they have. And that's what makes their gift important. You can change a life through your gift. You can change, you can heal through your gift. This church is healing scars every day. This church is healing souls every day. This church is telling people that they matter every day. This church is standing up against hateful legislation every day. And it's because of your gifts that we are able to do this great work. And I don't have to tell you the long list of things that this church does from you know, administration to pastoral care to fighting against anti LGBTQIA legislation to, to fight against discrimination. There are many, many things and just to be observant, to see those things. But as we give today, as we give of our tithes and offerings, I want you to have that message. And I wanted to share a couple of scriptures that back that up. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 12, it says a three strand cord is not quickly broken. We are stronger together than we are apart. We are stronger unified in one cause, the one cause to show our scars and to love each other unconditionally, to accept each other unconditionally. And lastly, from the book of Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20, it says, where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. Importance of unity, the importance of togetherness, that there's strength in that. Will you pray with me today? God, Mother, Father, they, them, universe, God, and light and love and hope. We come before you today and we thank you. We want to be sure to show our gratitude for what you have already done. And so I thank you. I thank you for the pastors of this church. I thank you for the leaders, the ministerial leaders of this church. We thank you because without them, this service wouldn't happen. So thank you, God. Thank you for wonderful people that step up every day. Thank you for our wonderful music ministry that we have here. What a beautiful music ministry we have in Luis Ramirez. Thank you, God, for this life. Thank you for our pastors, our associate pastor, Reverend Keith Mazingo and Reverend Alejandro. Thank you for them. Our wonderful board and our wonderful late delegates, everybody that contributes. Thank you. You matter. You are loved. And so today, as we come before you, we pray that you bless the offering. God, you know what our needs are. You know what our cause is. You know what our mission is. And so we just pray over the offering. And on the screen, you may have seen on the screen, are various ways to give. Um, they are enumerated on our screen right now. And so as we give to you today, as we give back to this wonderful ministry and to you, O oh God, we are reminded of the love you have for us, the love you have, we have for ourselves, and the love we have for each other. And so it is. And may God let it be so. Amen. And remember what we've just heard and, and take it all in because I'm still reeling from the, the message and the call to offering. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Now is a good time for the at-home congregation or the online congregation to gather your bread and, and juice for communion. And join us as we pray. The COVID candle still burns. It burns to prove to a pandemic-scarred world that revelation comes. So the COVID candle still burns. Let us pray. Loving God, we bask 
in the spring of your resurrection, as nature joins the choruses of praise in the songs of colors of each Easter season sunrise. We believe in the scars of yours because we see the scars of our own hearts from the troubles in our lives. We see the scars on our siblings from the systems that oppress us. And we see the scars on our planet from the carelessness we have condoned. We believe that all scars are the rough patches of healing. We believe that rough healing is the beginning of hope. We believe that healing love is the proof of your coming. We believe that your coming is the glory with us now. Amen. Amen. Friends, here at Founders MCC, we have an open table, just like all the MCCs around the world. This means that you don't have to remember this church or any church to be a part and have a seat at this table. Wherever you are, are many tables, and this table now become one table, God's table, where no one is excluded. As part of the priesthood of all believers, everyone gathered around this table is invited for the, to the feast. <laughs> We remember that the night Jesus sat with the ones who would scar him. We remember that he took bread, blessed it, and broke it as we do. This saying, this is my body, that will, will share all the scars that all of us bear. We eat this to share the resurrection that is ours. God, consecrate this bread that we may be fed by the living Christ, that you are making us Christ's body. Let us consume. We remember that Jesus raised a cup with the ones who would deny him. We remember that he blessed it and passed it among them, saying, this is my blood that will be shed for you with the everlasting stream. Let's try that again. This is my blood that will be the everlasting stream flowing through us all. We drink this to show the resurrection that is ours. God, please consecrate this cup that we may be quenched by the living Christ. Thank you for giving us Thomas's faith. Let us consume. Let us pray. God, we are filled in body, heart, and soul. Thank you for the spirit in these gifts within us and between us. Thank you for the bond that lasts when the meal is over. Amen.
I don't know about you, but I feel like the windows of heaven have been open today and raining spirit down on us. Amen. So glad that you joined us in worship today, whether in the room or online. Thank you for being with us. Glad for new folks. We're always glad to see you here. Glad to see a few folks that we haven't seen in a while. Welcome back home. We're so glad to see you. Know that you are missed when you are not here. Would you rise as you're able and join us in our closing song? So our closing song is the uh, second part of the song I wrote last week that we sang last week. But since we were trying to get out to the valley, we kind of clipped it off. And so now it's our closing song today. It's a bit interactive. Um, and just stay on that slide for a minute, Ed. Uh, don't move from that slide. So if you, if toward the end we want you to sing with us, and if you have a normal voice, you know, this is, you know, not high or low, but uh, we want you to sing. It's good. If you have a low voice or alto, a baritone, bass, the next part. If you have a high soprano or tenor, that's the third part. But here we're going to go. We're going to teach you the part. Hallelujah. hospitality out through the side door in the courtyard as well as the information table from uh, Pastor Lucia. 
So we invite you to go out through the courtyard and enjoy a time of refreshment and fellowship. God, thank you for this time we've had together. Thank you that Jesus really is alive. Thank you for a world that needs our hope and we can give it to them. Thank you, God, that Thomas set the example for us to say, I'll believe if I can see the genuine one. If I can see that it's real, I will believe. God, that's how we as the disciples today have to go out showing our scars, help us to move forward and continue to be the church, not only in the walls, but outside the walls. We ask in the name of Jesus our Christ and all that's holy. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Amen.